为什么？ Welcome to Little Miss Movies podcast, where two movie obsessed parents make their ten year old watch movies she'd never watch otherwise. This is episode number seventeen, The Magnificent Seven. Welcome, once more, to the Little Miss Movies podcast. I'm Josh. I'm a television writer, and、uh, I do other stuff. You play video games. Successful <laughs> at once again finishing Breath of the Wild、uh, on the、uh, Nintendo Switch. Yeah,、that、and yet, like, and yet you're still playing it. Yeah, it never yeah, ends. Yeah, we're not. Yeah,、oh, yeah. Okay. it's never. We're going、ending. all in. It's we're never ending. We're going all in. It's、uh, never ending.、Yeah. But yeah, I'm a television writer and、uh, I write music and I write.、Uh, I used to write comic books stuff. I don't know. It's really going on here. It's a really long list of things that I'm very non non committal to. Yeah.、Hmm. I was very committed to the Zelda thing, though. That was, yeah, that was very, very committed. very committed. I'm on board. Yeah. For this,、yeah. I am on board. I'm also、uh, the parent of、uh, how old are you? Eleven. Ten. Ten quarters. Ugh. Okay. <laughs>、uh, ten and three quarter year old、like uh, who is our own Little Miss Movies. Hi, I'm Gable. I'm the ten and three quarters year old Little Miss Movies.、Uh, I'm ten and in fifth grade. I'm almost eleven, and I. Love Legend of Zelda, as should be pretty obvious, and I'm working my way through one of the games on my own. And I like Harry Potter and Animal Crossing, and playing piano and Minecraft and Girl Scouts and playing cello. I think that's everything. <laughs> that I like. You also like making slime. I do, but、mm. it never turns out good. No. No, it doesn't. I hate slime. It's literally glue and borax. I curse whoever mixed glue and borax. Hi, I'm Christina. <laughs> I am. I am also. I, I am a writer. I have a book. Oh yeah,、um, I forgot to say. I like、uh, writing and reading. Yes, you do. I forgot to say that. Can I go? Yeah. Okay. Um, as I was saying, I, I'm Christina. I'm also a writer. Um, I have um one book on actress Anne Dvorak that came out a few years ago, and I have a second book on Jane Russell. Coming out、uh, in June, so that's coming out very soon. And I am also a librarian slash archivist, and I am the mother of the ten and three quarters Little Miss movies. Last year it was nine and three quarters, and it was perfect. It was perfect. I was super duper into Harry Potter, and it was like so crazy, 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 crazy. But you still like Harry Potter. Yeah. Why do you say that? Because we have bought so much Harry Potter stuff. <laughs> But that was when it was、years. like the craziest thing in the world. Well, it lasted for years. I thought it would last a long. I thought it'd be like <laughs> Anne Dvorak for me. I thought it would last a long time. Anyway, yeah, it's turned into video games. Oh, okay. I still hear about her. Um, it's just turned into video okay, games. Okay, so we do actually watch movies. Don't just um talk about people's obsession with Harry Potter. We um, <laughs> so former obsession. This this week's movie, um, we watched it for a couple reasons. One is it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, two is I'm working on a project about movies in this genre, actually. So like it was sort of nice to refresh a bit and、uh, get to like look at them through fresh eyes.、Um, and we have not done a lot of、uh, your the, choice the genre. Well, let me listen. We haven't done a lot of the genre before, so、uh, we went with the Magnificent Seven,、uh, not the 2016 one, the 1961. Have we done any westerns yet? Which I mean, if it's in, is this our? She's seen High Noon, but we haven't discussed it on the podcast. No, I don't think so. No, no yeah, we didn't. We watched、first. it like two years I mean, before we, we did the. We podcast. We occasionally、yeah. punish her by making her watch Paint Your Wagon, but no, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> We've never made her watch Paint Your Wagon. <laughs> You've never made me watch it, and that is why I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay with that. That's why our marriage endures. Yeah, and I mean, it actually perfectly fits in because I'm doing Girl Scout camp this week, and today's theme is the 1960s, so. I'm recording a movie podcast about the movie in the 1960s. It came out. It came end, out. Yeah. yeah. So, and I talked about the podcast at the thing. So. So、know. Gable, do you want to give a spoiler-free、uh, rundown of the plot of the Magnificent Seven for those who may not know? Yeah, sure. So it's basically about. Mute face. <laughs> Stretching my back. <laughs> Okay, so it's basically about like a village that keeps getting like raided and robbed by a group of bad guys called what the banditos. They just are banditos. 
Okay. They're called something. They're, no, they're, they're bad guys. They're, they're just bad they're guys. They're just okay. generic bad guys. Okay, they're just bad guys. And so then, you know, the if they get robbed slash raided another time, then the village is going to be starving. So they enlist the help of two local gunmen who then recruit five others. I saw you doing math. I know. There. I saw That's you doing math. Worrying. Like, where do we? How do we get to your seven? Geni- your genius IQ is. <laughs> I, I don't want to do in, math in on spring question. break. I don't want to do math on spring break. No. Um. So they get five more people, and you know, and then it's magnificent seven, and then they go back and they teach the village how to like prepare themselves for when the bandits are going to come back, and then it goes into spoiler territory, and we're not allowed to do that. Okay. That's Fair pretty, enough. That's pretty good summation. So, Gable, <laughs> did you like the movie? It was okay. I didn't like it as much as like other movies, but it was full of action, which was, I guess, that was cool. I didn't like that it was guns and not like sword fight or lightsaber fight or magic wand fight. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, while, while, while the gun fight was going on, I, I believe uh, I don't like this part came out of your mouth a few times. Mm-hmm. Why? <laughs> but you're okay with sword fighting? And lightsabers? Cool. Lightsabers are awesome. Okay. I guess. That's a much worse way to die, though, I would think. Lightsabers are cool, though. And I nobody's guess. ever been hurt by but them how, in real like, life. I mean, honestly, okay, I get that wands are fantasy, but it like you're still shooting. Like At the end of the day, how is a wand different than shooting a gun? Because you get to gun? cast awesome spells and so just going, blam, you're dead. Mm. You don't kill people in Harry Potter a lot of the time. But a vada a lot of the time. <laughs> But that's like a that's like a curse that people aren't allowed to do unless their name is Voldemort. Hmm. Or if it's any consolation, Gable, most, the way most of the guys get shot in this movie probably wouldn't kill them. It would just, you know, give them like an infection that would kill them in a couple weeks. <laughs> so it would really be a miserable, painful, awful death. But it would take time. So, no, but you know. like in like Harry Potter, it's like the good guys don't kill people. I don't think. I mean, they kill bad guys. But... <laughs> It's it's mainly bad guys killing good guys, I think. But in this, I the think. good guys don't really like the good guys are defending themselves. That's well, sort of the well, like the usually, traditional and, yeah. description of a good guy in a movie. Like when you're talking about like the the binary good versus bad, is that the good guys act you know morally and the bad guys don't, and then the good guys have to figure out how to act morally against immoral villains. You know. So, like, these guys don't go out of their way to kill other people. They're essentially just protecting themselves and protecting the village against marauding lunatics. Although I have to say, in very non-Mexican Eli Wallach's defense, like the head of the game. like the most Jewish, he's the most Jewish (laughs) Mexican bandito ever created. He really is. But, I mean, he's very... um, like the reason why he's doing it is to be able to feed his men. So I think like in a way, you know, like he's, you know, like when at least the- he's not just like pure evil and just yeah. attack people for literally so think- no reason. Yeah. But the reason he has to feed his men is because he has an army that he runs around stealing from people. <laughs> That's true. But it's nice that he cares about them. <laughs> like, it's nice that he's, you know, it's like he, he cares. I don't know. I, I feel like there's so much pain when he talks and about like, how like my men are stealing. It's not like Voldemort who's just like, you can go and kill yourself. I don't care. Just, yeah, well, just yeah. go and defend me. Voldemort's you know, a bit more like kind of like, yeah. He's like, evil for literally no reason He's whatsoever. like a total black hat where I feel like at least Eli Wallach has that motive. You know, like he, he, he is a bad guy who truly believes that what he is doing is just. I don't know. He's also got a lot of gold on him. Because <laughs> he, like ne- he has like a gold necklace. He's got uh, he's got gold teeth. I'm like, uh, well, he's uh, supposed to yank his teeth out? I'm just saying, he's like, mm-hmm. I, I feel like he, he feels it. Like, I think he, he really feels like what he is doing is just because he, he cares about it. I thought it was just nice that he cares, he cares about his men. His problem is that he cares, he cares too, too much. much. That's why he can't get a job. <laughs> Every time he goes in for an interview, he tells them and they're like, whoa, we can't have that. That's yeah, what, what is your biggest flaw? Yeah, this is his biggest I care, flaw. I care too much. The Gable, the other, see, the other thing about that actor, Gable, Eli Wallach would go on a few years later to play like one of the most iconic Western characters of all time. There's a movie called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Uh, and he is the ugly in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. He's not the good or the bad? No. He's the ugly. No, he's the ugly. 
Are you going to make um, her watch that? No. I don't know. I mean, no. it's a Civil War movie, so yeah. like you'd like it, right? Like you'd have me. Yeah, I've seen that movie. I'm saying, like, so like you'd be pro, I think. Oh, I watch it. Yeah, yeah. these are just you know the, these movies are. You even mentioned like that you were selecting like a total dad movie, mm-hmm. which this is. I mean, these are the movies my stepdad loved. So like I saw the Magnificent Seven multiple times when I was a kid, and the Good, the Bad, the Ugly, and there's only the one thing Dezen. that's about a war that I actually like, and that's called Hamilton. I think that's that's it. Well, I don't okay. know what else you've seen. What have you seen? You saw Gone with the Wind. What else have you seen? There is that movie about the Holocaust. Is that you've seen? Schindler's List? <laughs> ten minutes of Schindler's List. <laughs> We've not no, watched not Schindler's List. So she saw ten minutes of Schindler's List and she was like, when oh, I'm out. See- oh, is that when I was at work one yeah, day? <laughs> I think I was like sick. I'm like, well, your daddy's better. She was well, at funny. home sick and you put on Schindler's List? I think so. Yes. No, I it's think a it was very, a it's a very Josh thing to do. <laughs> I think it was you were working on a Saturday. Oh, that's a Josh thing to do. No, I'm gonna get her to no, watch I was, it. No, I was sick. I, I was feel like a something. bad. I was like taking Jewish a nap. Dad. I was like taking a nap or something. I feel like a bad. And you woke me up and you're like, you need to wa- "No, I never want to watch it." Well, you got to. No, you no. should. No. No. Yeah, you got First to. First ten minutes of it. Next week on the Little Miss Movies podcast. No. No, next week's a different movie. <laughs> well, Clockwork Orange or into watching Schindler's it. Schindler's List. We're not doing Clockwork Orange. No. Um, okay, what else? What else? Do you have anything? What else do you want to say about this movie, Cable? Am I allowed to go into my questions? Yes. Do you want, Sure. <laughs> Just talk, Cable. You can go into your okay. questions. Um. So before we get into technical stuff, like usual, I want to ask you a question about the trailer. About the <laughs> yeah, about the very strange. We trailer. did watch the trailer to to the the film. Yes, it's like it seemed really. I mean, okay, no, it was very strange. Not it seemed, it was very strange. Why was the trailer strange? The, the music- magnificent <laughs> seven. There were that. seven, and they were magnificent. That that's why. So there was a whole like. It became a Western thing. I mean, it also started. It, but it making started weird in like theme the 30s. songs. Because it was like the, there were there was a big movement of singing cowboy movies about cowboys who sung, who That's sang. That's true. Right? So Roy Rogers. Roy Rogers. I she, can't imagine taking that kind of movie serious. She's oh, yeah. They're, they're, yeah they're oh, hard well, to they're take not. Yeah. I don't think, I don't know if you're supposed to take them serious. They're, okay. they're much more, they were like uh, like little boy movies. And the thing is, is those little boys grew up to be men who liked watching this kind of Western. So that's actually sort of like part of the progression of it all. Um, But so from that, there became this weird tradition of these weird uh, like theme songs, um, mostly sung by like, is it like Marty Robbins sings a lot of them? There's like a couple guys. Who sings High Noon? Tex Ritter? Tex. I think it's Marty Robbins. I could be wrong. Maybe it's Tex Ritter. I think Tex Ritter sings High Noon. Um, because remember, like, High Noon is the, do not and forsake me, me, oh my darling. Dun, 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 like, dun, dun, And they all yeah. have these, like, very sort of, like... Uh, well, like, very literal lyrics yeah. that pertain to the plot of the movie. Yes. Like, very specifically chosen songs. Frequently, they would put a young pop star in the movies. So there was a movie, it's El Dorado, it's El Dorado that has Ricky Nelson? Yes. So El Dorado... No, it's, it's Rio Bravo. Bravo. There's one movie. El Dorado has James. There's Conner. one movie that was made three times by the same director, starring one of the same actors, and each one has a different. Has, the other cast is different, but one of them has Ricky Nelson, who was like a young, you know, he was a like a young heartthrob, you know, pop star, and so it's sort of like it's right. They're always like adjacent to, you know, how do we get teenage girls to come watch these movies, um, and that just was sort of how these things. And worked. apparently the studio thought that in order to get people to come watch The Magnificent Seven. Rather than using <laughs> literally the best one of score the most icon- what, ever What written, became one of the most iconic they scores ever. They decided to go, ever. The Magnificent. Yeah. The yeah. Magnificent I would, Seven. But I would say, it's not even that it became the best score. Like, it is just ama- like, it is an amazing yeah. piece of music. Like, it, it is. Right? Like, you'd never heard it before. I feel like I have. I'm sure she has because it gets gets used. used Yeah, it gets used all the time. But But yeah, when we were watching, I was like, "This seems very familiar." But it's like, but it's awesome, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See. But that is why that. (laughs) That presumably is why that trailer (laughs) has that ridiculous song. (laughs) Um, look it up. What did you guys think about it when you first saw it? The trailer or the movie? <laughs> the trailer, I thought, whatever <laughs> you were trailer. thinking, 
<laughs> the trailer that we watched like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> the trailer. No, the trailer's silly. No, the movie, I always liked the movie growing up. I mean, the, the characters, I think, are, you know, are so compelling. And even though, you know, like Steve McQueen and Yul Brynner did not get along off screen, I think they play off each other really well on screen. I actually didn't mean the trailer, but... <laughs> Um, oh. the way There's not a lot of discussion to have about the terrible trailer, honey. Well, I was supposed no, to keep I, talking about the trailer. No, hold on, hold on. Oh. Hold on. Let, me, let me say it all together. Okay. I didn't, Sorry. You didn't let me finish. So the trailer seems to. You know, Get what? It together, mom. <laughs> the trailer Jerk. Is just, <laughs> the Apparently. trailer is just like kind of strange. So, what did you think about it? Like, what did you take from it? From it like, did you. did Like, did, like Mama, because you, you saw the movie before you saw the trailer? Right. Well, we both did because neither of us were alive okay. in 1960. I know. Well, and I saw the trailer for the first time like, like 15 <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> but like, if you watch the trailer before watching a movie, like, what would you have thought about the movie? Would you like? What would you have thought it would be like? I think I probably like, would. How would you th- would have thought like it would be about like like it's a movie? I think I would have just thought it was a very typical western. Yeah, it plays like a generic. That's what all westerns like. What the trailer is cut into feels like every other western of the time like it does not feel like the actual special movie that magnificent seven is and i think that one of the crazy things about magnificent seven is that it is somehow like just like the prototypical western like it is every cliche jammed up against each other and yet is somehow not like it's somehow so much better than all of that like it's genuinely like i i in my soul of souls like i think it's one of the best westerns if not one of the best movies ever made like it just works it just works so well okay okay so now that yeah it's really all i had about the trailer but <laughs> that was a lot about the trailer that was, that was like four minutes we did on the trailer <laughs> that's a, that's not a lot of time wow well, i mean it's a 30 second trailer so that is a lot with a, with a goofy song yeah Moving on. <laughs> um, so you were talking about how it was like a remake. I think you were talking about that. Or was it? Mm-hmm. So it's a remake. Yeah, of, a, so of a Japanese movie. Could you talk a bit more about that and like how is it like the original movie? So it's a remake of a Akira Kurosawa movie called The Seven Samurai. Um, Akira Kurosawa is like one of the greatest filmmakers who ever lived. Um. Interestingly, while they were making the seven, he was making the seven samurai in one studio. Do you know what movie they were making in the studio next door? Star Wars? No. In <laughs> Japan? I don't know. What was a movie from Japan that I know you love because we go and see them whenever they come out? Godzilla. Yep. So the studio, so Toho was making the seven samurai simultaneously to making Godzilla and they had invested themselves. They'd like put every penny they had into the two movies. And if either one of them had failed, the studio would have been broke. And like, thankfully they were both like massive hits. Um, No. So, I mean, the difference is obviously the seven samurai is set in the 1500s. Um, Instead of being uh, like, they're essentially like mercenaries which i guess they are in seven samurai but it doesn't really play or in uh, magnificent seven but it doesn't really play that way so they're like they're much less moralistic they're much much more about like you're paying us to do a job we're going to do the job and then we're going to leave and we don't care and so the arc of the movie is more about them becoming human right whereas like in magnificent seven they're human the whole time you know they're human they just have practical issues they have to deal with as well of like we need to get paid we have to survive we have to get out of here i don't want to get killed how do we do that whereas seven samurai it really is like cut and dry of like look if you're stupid enough to pay us money to try and do this thing we're going to take your money but you know no guarantees guys um but it's also you know you get more it does two things that are weird like it it spends Seven Samurai spends more time with the villagers so that you actually sort of have like a better sense of like why things are the way they are. So it's not just like we're farmers. We don't know how to use guns where it's really like there's just not like there's no functional way for us to do this. Like we are so outclassed in every way. Um, And look, it's added to the fact that it's swords. 
you know, like they're fighting with swords and, you know, like they can't, they literally can't keep up. They're fighting against, you know, an army and they have literally nothing to fight with. Um, so they do more time with that. And then even Otter, they spend almost no time on the bad guys. Um, like the bad guys are like, I'm trying to think how to say it. So it doesn't have Eli Wallace's does not have the, pathos. It does, no, it really doesn't. And no, it's funny to say, but like it really doesn't. Like the bad guys are just sort of like f- just generic. Like they're really just like they are evil. They're just guys. They're just they're an evil group of they're like an evil army who comes in like a hurricane and then leaves and then comes in like a hurricane again and then leaves. They're like Ganondorf. Yeah, like they're not Basically, like yeah. they're essentially like they're they have no motivation other than we are evil they just and we be evil. we want what you have we will take it and then come back goodbye. We will. I want to take power over the world, so we're just gonna do it through you. And I think like again like uh, you know we were joking about it earlier, but that is one of the things that makes you know Madison Seven interesting is that the sort of like weird like you know what a um, symbiotic relationship is. We learned about that in school i mean i probably do i think it's like it's like they may not be like you know physically related in any way they may not be friends they may not be like like related related like like brother or sister or something but like they're related because of like dependence on each other yeah so like there's birds that live on elephants Right, there's, there's birds the, that like eat. They essentially like pick food off of elephants' bodies. Yeah, they? there's like the clownfish. Right, there's the fish the, that fly around. The pilot fish that sort of like fly. You know, flock there's the clownfish. The, the clownfish depends on like the sea anemone. Yes, right? and then Dory gets lost, and they have to go and find her because she gets lost all the I time. I actually learned about the fish thing from a class I did yeah. about underwater stuff. In yeah. the summer. was Finding Nemo covered? <laughs> did they talk about Finding Nemo? No. Yeah. Yeah, um, it was a class of like eight year olds. So yeah, but yeah, I mean, look, the thing about the Seven Samurai and Akira Kurosawa is he made movies in like after he started around World War Two, so he started in the forties, um, and was it like from the jump was just a genius. Like his movies don't look like anyone else's; they don't work like anyone else's, um, and you can you can like feel in them like an electricity that is just not in anyone else's movie. So it's, it's actually hard to cons- like compare them to each other because they're so different. Seven Samurai is four hours long. Yeah. I don't want to watch that. You no, know? but oh like my God. it doesn't really feel four hours long. Is it really that long? Yeah. It's like three and a half at least. Hmm. Um, and then, and has an intermission. Does it? I mm-hmm. haven't seen it in so long. It's like Gone with the remember. Wind. It's like Gone with the Wind, Mama. You should love it. <laughs> it's like Gone with the Wind in that part. Because Gone with the Wind's length is, you know, it's at, so at its long. Core. Oh my god, <laughs> the virtue it's of that too film. long of a movie. The other, the other claim to fame of Akira Kurosawa is he made a movie called The Hidden Fortress, mm-hmm. which you might recognize from a movie that is a soft remake of that called Star Wars. Have you heard of that one? <laughs> I think I have. Yeah. Probably. I think I've heard it a lot. Namely, because mommy's wearing a t shirt of it mm. as, at the moment. I yeah. am. But yeah, and like, and I what I, bunch of stuff after the success of this, they actually remade a bunch of his other movies. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly being one of them is actually a remake of one of his movies. Um, and they did two sequels to the, I think they're sequels. They after it? It's mm-hmm. Fistful of Dollars and a Few Dollars More. I think or after I don't know my dates are weird because they don't yeah, really don't matter know. about the order but they re, you know they remade three of his other movies as westerns afterwards that were also huge huge you know global hits when they became you know westerns and then I just thought of a question to add on to that part mm-hmm. which one do you like better they're just totally different <laughs> they're just they're completely different things like Magnus and Seven is so much fun um Seven Samurai is like it's like a work of art. It's like a moving, like emotional piece of art in a way that like Magnificent Seven isn't like when characters start dying, when characters start dying, you're not like weeping for them, you know, like you're into it and you know. care about them. I was pretty bummed. Yeah. Yeah. But I like, was like, why is this like 
Bridge to Terabithia where they kill the main characters. <laughs> oh, Bridge I... to Terabithia. You just spoiled two <laughs> things, Gable. <laughs> Way to go. Sorry. Now I'm never going to read Bridge to Terabithia. I have the book if you want No, it. it's too late now. Now I know people die. <laughs> <laughs> um no and it is like seven samurai is a, is like an ex, it's an experience like it's a thing you have to like i think it's as far as what we were watching it the other day i put it on and it's actually like hard to watch it when you have distractions like you really need to see it in a theater where you're yeah. sitting there and like focused on it because it's it's his movies are so, have so much depth to them and there's so much going on that you need to actually be sort of like completely locked into them Whereas Magnuson 7, like, I've seen it, uh, you know, a hundred times. Like, it's just on in the background all the time. I can literally just plug it in and it's fine. And I'm completely good. And then I have one more question. And I just have a bunch of statements or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so this is... What? What? You're adorable. That's all. I think you're very sweet. <laughs> um, so this is about technical stuff as in, like, technical stuff of the movie not like you know what we were just talking about but like you know actual how they, technical how they stuff. did stuff like yeah how they like made that stuff? okay yeah so we learned about from a thing that we just watched that they had like the height difference between steve mcqueen and yule brenner 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 mm -hmm. so like and we talked about how like they and it talked and i think you talked about it mama you like looked mm -hmm. online and how they had like to stay on like a mound or something well, that Yul Brynner was only slight, like a half an inch taller than Steve McQueen, and they developed a very adversarial relationship um, on on the set of this film. And so Yul Brynner wanted to look taller, and so because you know, and so he had like a mound of dirt that he would stand on so that he would appear on screen taller than Steve McQueen. Like he would make he would make sure oh. before shooting that there that was, he was that standing. he was. You'd always okay, have the high ground. That's my question out that's the window. In a, in a, what do you mean? <laughs> my question I was going to be like, they had since they had such a height difference, then like, how did they do it? So make it look like they were the right height. It's, no, it's just he no, wanted to look taller. They were the, they were pretty much the same height, and he wanted to look tall. And I guess McQueen would like okay. kick at the mount. <laughs> no, and like it. That's again like the thing about the movie is that they were like clearly. The two of them hated each other. Like, it's very clear that the two of them, when you actually watch the movie and you, like, really? know the things they were doing, mm -hmm. but everybody else were just messing with each other the whole time. And I think that's part of why the movie feels so fun. I don't feel like, I mean, I guess I didn't, I guess I didn't really know. I'm telling you, watch the hat, the hat thing. Yeah, where he touched, where yeah. Steve McQueen, like, touches his hat yeah. to upstage. Yeah. Yeah. No, and you can, and, like, you'll getting, like, you can see him getting irritated when they're in shots together. I think if you don't know, you yeah. don't notice. I think they play off each other wonderfully. Yeah, but like the two, but the rest of the guys were all pulling pranks on each other and like they would, you know, they'd play poker and drink all night and like they all had this like, they had a blast, you know, making making this movie, getting to hang out with each other and just do this this crazy cool thing they shot in because they shot in mexico i think mm -hmm. right? I, yeah, I believe they did yeah. shoot in mexico. So, you know, they're like, they got to live this cowboy lifestyle while they made the movie um which again was something that was ending like those movies were stopped they weren't being made anymore you know especially in hollywood like they were just going away so they got to get the chance to do the horses and do all that stuff like they it was like the you know, brenner was using jimmy stewart's horse that jimmy stewart always used in all his westerns oh really yeah it's just like stuff like weird stuff like that yeah. where it was just like because no, like things that things that were all part of the Western history of Hollywood were all sitting vacant and left because nobody was making westerns, and so there's all these little like bits and pieces of of Western history, of the history of the Western movie is sort of like filed into the movie as well, um, and it's interesting because it didn't like when I said at the beginning that we did it, I said that I'm working on a thing that's in the genre. I actually wasn't talking about Westerns. I was talking about the, the sort of like team up picture, the like ensemble, mm. like the ensemble great escape, dirty dozen mm -hmm. thing. And I would say that's actually what this kicked off more than mm -hmm. right. More than the, more than the Western. Like it led to Sam Peckinpah and then uh, Leone. But like what this really did was the like all star 
just 12, 12 plus stars doing a doing a crazy movie where everyone acts like a lunatic for two and a half hours. Well, what's amazing is even if the characters slash actors didn't have a lot of lines, they still make a huge impression. So yeah. we looked at like James Coburn, who plays um, like the guy who sleeps a lot and has the, <laughs> and the you know, yields, yields the knife. And then Robert Vaughn is the one who has um, the gloves. Mm -hmm. It's like the real nervous one. They have very, they, they have, I think when we looked it up, James Coburn has like 11 lines in the entire movie. And Robert Vaughn has like 16 lines. But both of those characters are so memorable, um, as are the portrayals. There's a joke. You know, Gable, look at this. I'm going to do it for her. She's going to be like, uh-huh. There's a joke on The Simpsons, in fact, about the guy with the knife. Really? Yeah, there's that one episode where it's like the mafia is fighting the Yakuza. And there's like a mob fight in their front yard, in the Simpsons' front yard. And while they're sitting there, like everyone's fighting and Marge is like, Homer, come away from the window. And Homer's like, but the guy with the knife, he hasn't done anything yet. It's going to be amazing. And then he oh, yeah. looks away and then he looks back and the, like there's just somebody with a knife in them. And he's like, oh, I looked away. I missed it. <laughs> that's what I remember. I had my like, uh huh. But that's yeah. what it's in reference to. It's that thing that like that moment. And again, in all of these movies, there's always that guy. There's always the guy who's like the quiet one who has some crazy skill that's going to come out that he's going to use and when he uses it it's going to be awesome which is you know like when you yeah, have the duel like the duel scene in this is ridiculous it's so great. i remember that episode I remember i was like what is going on yeah. in this yard yeah that's why you just need to, to trust us and roll with all these movies we're making you watch because it just brings you that much closer Will to you the let Simpsons. me watch the streetcar ones so i can watch <laughs> the simpsons episode i like that she's like i just want to watch streetcar named desire <laughs> It's going to be I want to watch the Simpsons we, episode. I mean, I'm happy to watch it. Your mom's going to have to. It's going to be a lot of conversation that your mom has to have. I know. I, I have not let Gable watch the Streetcar Named Marge episode, which is my favorite episode of The Simpsons, because I feel like she really needs to watch A Streetcar Named Desire to appreciate There's it. There's tons of other references, though, and you didn't. No, that one's like all Streetcar Named it's Desire. It's all Streetcar Named like the, like I just feel like the episode will just be lost on you. I still want to watch it. I get that. I, I, I don't know. Maybe we're watching Streetcar soon. <laughs> I love it. So, Gable, okay. as we wind our way towards the end of our time. Oh, wait, was that all? Mm -hmm. That was every. That was all mm -hmm. of your questions? What, oh. Gable? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to briefly point. I just wanted to briefly um, talk about Robert Vaughn's character, though. So is again is the idea like he has PTSD? Is it like from the Civil War or just from his his like previous gunfights? Like, do we really know what's going on with him? I think it's like they can't they don't say it for something like they don't want to say it because it's too hard to say. But I think that but I think war, that he has PTSD from the war. I think that's fascinating. Though. Yeah, like I think that's a really interesting choice for him, well, especially because it's Korean War and not Vietnam. Like yeah. we're so used to it being yeah. Vietnam stuff, but it's technically it's it would be Korea. Is what we're like supposed to, you know, is the it's correlation like associate with, you know, or I guess World War Two. Yeah, it could be World War Two. But Not. I just I just think it's an interesting choice and especially to, to have like one of our hero characters have, you know, just such a vulnerable weakness. I don't think it's something you see, you know, a lot of the time in, in the Hollywood Westerns. Yeah. So I, I just I appreciated that. Okay. So Gable. Yeah. Here comes. Would you like to give your final assessment for our listeners at home? Does that mean we're just... Gable smiles. <laughs> oh, okay. You can okay. talk about how you okay. felt about it. You can give like your final wrap up. Did you have a closing statement? Yeah. Oh, you okay. have a summation? She does. She does. <laughs> In okay. closing. <laughs> I do. So, like I said, it was okay. I think overall it was a good movie, just not my kind of movie. I definitely, it was chock full of action, so I, re I recommend it to people who like, like action movies and or western movies and or gunfights. Horses, or if they like horses. <laughs> and or horses. And Yul Brenner. <laughs> oh, bald, yes. Bald like, Russians. Uh, all that stuff, I guess. Hot, hot mm -hmm. bald Russians, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, all, all that. German German young men <laughs> you who now. confusingly are in the old west. You can stop now. And become don't want to be farmers who are secretly farmers but don't want to be farmers. But then but they do, do want to be farmers. farmers. <laughs> you can they do want to be now. farmers. They just want to be farmers with a better looking wife than the women who are in his town. Apparently, okay. Very you strange. can stop now. 
I, I agree. <laughs> you can stop now. <laughs> so, like I said, it was okay, but just, it wasn't my favorite. Like, I think, yeah, like I said, it was overall a great movie, just not really the kind of movie that I like watching a lot. Okay. And it gets... I'm starting to rethink my Gable Smile rating that I wrote down. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, what did you write down? I wrote down between two or three. Oh, wow. Two and three. Okay. <laughs> you rethink it. Probably do you just... 3.3. Okay. So This I, rules have come in handy. I'm guessing it's the, the, like the, the violence that turned you off. Yeah. Okay. But would you recommend it to other kids? I, I don't know if my friends would be interested in it. Okay. <laughs> if you mean great, like, great or other kids besides my friends, then... I mean, Just maybe. other kids. I don't know. I mean, maybe. Okay. I don't think my friends would be interested in it, though. No? Probably not. Okay. Well, there you have it. <laughs> what are we doing? So next week... It's Mommy's Choice. It is. We already watched it. We're really, yes, we we're really catching up, folks. We are. Yeah. Uh, what are we doing next week, are we Christina? Gonna, are we going to save it and make it a secret? No, we're not going to make it a secret. So we're not doing Streetcar quite yet, but I think soon. Um, but next week, we are going to be doing the Philadelphia story. So since Gable um, gave us the green light for more Catherine Hepburn movies, um, I spared no time. We I just, we just, just launched right in. But, we watched, like, remember... There's the night when we first watched Susan Kane, mm -hmm. and you were like, okay, which one of these three movies, Susan Kane, Sunset Boulevard, and Philadelphia Story, mm -hmm. we've watched all three of those we movies. We have now watched all three of those movies. And that was months ago. And, Phil and yet we still have not watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No. Mama, tell him that I'm never watching have that. I, have mm -hmm. I made it clear? Because you watched Psycho, and I think you liked Psycho, <laughs> didn't liked you? Psycho. Okay. Have I made it clear to you that Texas Chainsaw Massacre is the same story as Psycho? They're actually based I on the same serial want... killer. No. Do you I... know what movie I don't no. want to watch at Texas all? Texas Chainsaw Massacre alone with my daughter. Yes, Texas Chainsaw. <laughs> I I need not ever see that movie again. I need not ever see it in any point of view. Phil Never ever ever. Uh, Philadelphia Story might be on a scratch off poster. I think it is. I think the Texas Chainsaw Massacre might be the Philadelphia story <laughs> of horror movies. You might be correct about that. But both of us refuse to watch it. We're not watching it. It's two to one. See, Leatherface has to, to decide between his <laughs> oh, love for <laughs> the girl from Maryland and chainsaws and his chainsaw <laughs> and his responsibility to his family. That's a hard decision. It's very much like a. It's very much I think, a Dad, I think he love triangle limit. Dad. going on there. <laughs> if Jimmy Stewart was also there. What, Dad? If Jimmy the, Stewart was also movie. there, it, it might be the greatest movie ever uh, made. But he's not. Oh, what, what are you doing, Leather, oh, Leatherface? Leatherface. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, Leatherface, you're cutting it all wrong. Oh, I mean, Catherine Hepburn comes in. I remember he used to be so yaw. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're going to cut the meat, you, you can't use the chainsaw. You're just, you're making a mess of everything. Oh. I'm going to say goodnight, Gable. <laughs> Bye. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you, uh, next we'll see you in time. a week. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. The Loomis Movies Podcast is hosted by Christina Rice, Josh Fialkoff, and me, Gable Fialkoff. We recorded, mixed, and produced in North Hollywood, California. Series art by Gabo. Episode art by Gabo Fialco. Theme song by Gibby and the Bees. All contents copyright 2021. Valeria Shansing. Visit us online for more at littlemissmovies.com. Dot <laughs> com. <laughs> <Dot com. laughs> I go like that now. For some reason. You're adorable. Dot com. Mary. Dot com. <laughs>